While, while I was away, because I was in the, in the Lake District the last couple also, of weeks... And you all saw your video, I just wanted to get that in. Well, the video worked all right. I uploaded a video from uh, a tavern, <laughs> yes, a stick of on tavern. <laughs> yes, we saw it. And it and you were the first <laughs> customer there, weren't you? I was, and it wasn't open. <laughs> and pouring down the rain, you were waiting there. Uh, well, I didn't know how long it would take me to upload it, you see. But oh, yeah. it, it only, actually only took about 40 minutes. The Wi-Fi is quite good in the Langdale Valley. Oh, that's good. And um, so the Sticklebarn Tavern has also has got Wi-Fi when it's open, I think. So the basic point is that um, any, any sort of speech contribution could be put onto YouTube and it could be played on radio quite soon afterwards. And um, what a, what a re one reason for doing that, apart from testing out the idea, was just to draw attention to the, the TED videos because the, the, the YouTube versions of the talks from TED in Exeter are now uploaded. And I think they're, they're well worth having a look at. I think you need to explain what TED is, because it could be a child's toy. <laughs> um, yes, it could be, it could be that. Yes it could, um, be, yes, it could be anything like that. So well, I, uh, my understanding is that it stands for technology, mm -hmm. entertainment and design. Right. And it started quite a long time ago, at least 20 years ago, I think, in uh, California. And at that time, I think those ideas were um, not central to the university scene, for example. So design as a subject is, um, well, it's a, it's a lot better accepted now than it was then. And technology, um, well, it, it's sort of gained a bit marginal. I don't, we've got, you see, we've got all these conversations going. I'm, I'm answering your questions slowly, Jody. You may have, you may have to start uh, winding, <laughs> not winding me up, telling me what time it is. <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh, we can easily wind you up. <laughs> yeah, you're very easy. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've learned that. Uh, what, what do you do? You go around there and take all the CDs away. Yeah, that'll Oh, yes, no, I'm no, 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 without no, a no, CD. No. Anyway, it seems to me there's yeah. a similar conversation going on about the MOOC, which is just another word for using technology in education. So I think uh, at some point, the, the combination of entertainment then, because they, they stress the word entertainment, uh, so what the, whatever it is they're doing that they're talking about in these conferences is coming from, let's say, Hollywood or, or sound stages or uh, recording studios. Uh, it's coming from that sort of world rather than libraries and print and um, where culture normally comes from. That's, that's my sort of take on where, where TED is at. Um, and then they've allowed local TEDs, TEDxs as they call them, to happen um, sort of under licence uh, anywhere. And um, so there's been, there's been three in Exeter, I think, now. But what, what I find quite strange is that the, it's, it's sort of gone back to being university-based, because it happens at the Northcott Theatre, and there's a limited number of tickets, and I think the people closest to the Northcott box office get the tickets soonest but anyway going back to Ted um, I've got my three questions uh, about this the first question is Creative Commons because uh, a lot of their material is is on a, on a Creative Commons basis but I don't think you can remix it easily I'm not, I'm not sure about this I've got to have another, another look and I, I just wanted to ask JD uh, what, what you think about Creative Commons and just sharing content. Well, can, you, can you first do your own view of what it is? Because I haven't quite formed a view of what Creative Commons are. It's an American legal device. Is it? It is. Uh, uh, there's a guy called... That, does it protect your work or something? Well, it, in fact, it does. I, th mm. I, think it, I, I, I think there's many reasons for going for it because a lot of people... Well, like on the demo scene, which is a, a sort of hacker's approach to computer animation and sound, uh, chip tunes and so forth, they do a lot more than that, but that's briefly what they do. Um, they started just sharing code and therefore they shared music or graphics or animation because that was just an extension of code and they, they felt that code was something which should be shared. Uh, but then they find that um, various producers 
take those tunes and uh, improve on them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they improve on them. Um, but the original... Well, they do they? Yeah, that's <laughs> <what I> <laughs> Sometimes it's worse than the original. Well, I think, no, I think you could say... Well, that, OK, mm -hmm. that maybe that's not, not right. Mm -hmm. But um, if, you can, if you have a, a, an original singer... Mm. I'm not going to get into this other than to say that Timberland has done a fantastic job on the Michael Jackson CD so he's really done a good job on that mm -hmm. and any sort of controversies or disputes about <laughs> where some of his tracks may have come from in the past as alleged by other people so that's through your creative comment is it? that's just my <laughs> comment which anybody <laughs> can, uh, <laughs> can repeat right. <laughs> um, what, what, what I'm getting at is that the, the obviously copyright on the web is an issue and yeah. some people want their work to be shared but they want it protected in other ways so well there's, I, I there's believe, various options I do believe that it's so if it's on the internet yeah. and it's a f now the internet was built on free gratis thing it should be all free so what you are we putting onto the internet should be available to you um, well certainly Tim Berners-Lee mm. uh, and CERN neither right. of them wanted to patent anything if they have a or charge for anything if they have a copy right, there would be a thing where you can't download it um, it be there that's a play. play yeah but it's quite hard to do yeah but do you always put a copyright thing on one you, you can you, yeah well, you can put a copyright thing on um, but there's a the BBC have, have got various options now for, for how you listen to music and the, there's, there is a presenter encouraging this by confessing that long ago they had um, a tape-to-tape -tape machine with a microphone in, in front of a television listening to Top of the Pops. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <this> is <laughs> I think well, <laughs> I think most of us have done that. So <laughs> <we're> <laughs> done that <anyway. laughs> I don't know. It's, well, that's, it's how far you go with it. That's the the problem. Yes. The internet, as I said, is a free entity. It's being built around, you know, free this and free what have you. But if you want a copy of on something, you've just got to stop them downloading it. Okay. Take away that thing that says download. Okay. If you take that away, then but it means that the, the copy right is... Well, you can't download it, but you can go and buy it. Okay. But, JT, I just, just want to come back to the question what how you how you think about it or John how you think about it D what's what how wide a community do you imagine that there is do you have the same point of view to somebody taking work like a copy of this show if it's rebroadcast on access or aerials yeah we wouldn't mind about that would we because we meet them now and again yeah but they had to be careful with what the music or if they have that copyright <laughs> thing on well, it as well. Well, but we're broadcasting on FM and they're online. So, but we're covered by the the, the payments to yes. the publishers, provided right. we keep them up. Right. You can donate, by the way, to Phonic FM. Mm. If you find our ways, our website, you can send us money, and we will send it to the Performing Rights Society on a regular basis. Um, but having said that, um, how do you think about people in uh, America taking our radio show and reusing it, or would we borrow something? Well, then from again, it's, it's on the internet. Yep. And so, if it's on the internet and you've got a recorder, you yep. can record it. It's like having a cassette machine <laughs> all those years ago, and you can record absolutely everything. Why? Well, but again, I would argue that you that that if we yeah, I think you're right, mm. JD, to a degree, because if you're going to put it on SoundCloud, if you're going to put it on the internet. Mm. Make it widely available. No. Yeah. You're 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 ba you're basically sharing that content. So it's gonna you you're not gonna be able to really have any. You're not really gonna really have be able to have any control right. over that. So you, I think you're fighting a losing battle if you if you say well, if you say you don't want it to be played on. Um, I'm just gonna use access areas for an example. Um, or you don't want it to be played by these people or those people, I think you're fighting a losing battle because you, it's not going to you. It's not going to work. You, you're not well, really, you're not going to be able to no, release but, it. No, but you might as well, if, you, if you've got that point of view and those expectations, you might as well use a Creative Commons licence because you can put in a claim at least for attribution, depending on which one you choose. So some of them would say, well, do what you like with it. Some of them say you can't... Um, rehash it let's say you have to leave it as it is 
and some some of them say well just just our attribute say where it came from or include a credit in this is a, a very difficult thing it's been going on for since music was first put onto records and tapes etc yes so you can see it's um it hasn't been resolved and then along comes the internet which makes it even worse or better well it's worse for the copyright because any anybody could share take music off yeah. somewhere and, and spread it about a bit so you actually you know you're going against the copyright thing of not actually buying it so I've never really had to buy some, you know, a piece of music, uh, well, buy this program, shall we say, uh, yeah. because of the music on board. Yeah. And then, th uh, and that was all legal. Then I think the internet will change, or it has to change. There's got to be ways of paying for it, mm. without without a doubt. But let me let me come on to the the the, the other question um, that interests me. Several, several of the talks were about schools and technology in schools. Mm -hmm. So one of them was about whether the web is, d is dangerous still and kids should be safeguarded from it. And that was more about how it's used out of school, I think. Well, I, there was an article, I think, on the BBC yesterday morning all about that the technology of today has made the, the child not learn the basics of life. What sort of basics? Well, how, uh, you know, from, from working out mathematical problems, because mm. they have a calculator. When I was at school, we'd never had a calculator. I'm sure you didn't, Will. <laughs> so it was a, a new entity right. to, uh, to use our brain. And that's why solving a problem is easy for us, probably, than the, the people of today, where they have the te technology to sort the problem out for them. OK. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, what, that's one... That's one thing going on, but the, the other thing seems to be that there's a, an emphasis on coding now, so that the, the, the curriculum is going to change from September, mm -hmm. and what's taught in the schools will include um, quite, quite a high level of uh, writing programs, and um, I'm, I just wonder whether actually that's what people are, are interested in, or whether that's the only thing that's going to go on. Well... Come, go closer to the mark. Well, I can't yeah. see that with BBM. What? So you're saying that they're going to abolish what? Well, they're going to do. They're going to. This is quite interesting. I think that w what was being said was that the 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 sort of ICT course, oh. you know, which let's say learn Microsoft Office, the sort oh. of office skills. Mm. And funnily enough, it, the the speaker is working for for Microsoft, so I thought it was a bit odd the. Um, the points made about the existing European computer driving license and so forth. But anyway, to make make computing more interesting, they're going to um, concentrate on coding. That's all very well, but I f I believe if they do that, they uh, they're not g uh, kids are not going to learn the basics that they need to be able to like use programs like Microsoft Office, Excel, Outlook. I mean, it's all important stuff. You, I think if they <laughs> It's all very, it's very well, but it depends how engaged, engaging they find their IT lessons. I mean, I know some people who wouldn't want to be writing, writing co writing programs, and doing all of this. Personally, I would love to be able to write programs, and it re I really find writing programs quite interesting. Uh, but what I, about what about digital literacy? Digital you know, in other words. Um, could you shoot a video and edit it to some extent? I probably could. I could. Cause I'd, well, I've done I've done a little bit of editing in media when mm. I did my media studies, so I probably I probably could edit it to a certain degree. Yes. 